Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and I'm back with another Comic Book Wednesday, and this time we are looking at G.I. Joe number 11. And this one is kind of special, it introduces a lot of new characters, so I'm very excited to look at this issue, so let's get started. On the cover we see two G.I. Joe characters that we haven't seen before, that's Snowjob and Doc, and they are on the G.I. Joe Schemobile, the Polar Battle Bear, and a Cobra soldier is on a hang glider shooting at them, and this is a pretty good cover, it promises some excitement in this issue. On the splash page we see a G.I. Joe helicopter piloted by Wild Bill, another new character, and they are flying over a battle zone. Apparently the other G.I. Joes are pinned down by a Cobra squad, and we have a title, The Pipeline Ploy, with scripter Larry Hama and penciler Mike Vosberg. I have to admit I'm not a big fan of Mike Vosberg's pencils in these G.I. Joe comics. The helicopter is bringing in reinforcements and taking out four wounded Joes, and sadly one of them is Breaker. I'm going to add this to the tally. This comic book just hates Breaker. Gung Ho and Snowjob go to the front line to continue firing on the Cobra soldiers while Rock and Roll and Snake Eyes fall back for a bit of lunch. At this point we get a little bit of the backstory. The G.I. Joe team had ambushed a squad of Cobra tanks that had been following along an oil pipeline. All of the Joes' heavy equipment had been taken out, but the Joes had taken out all but two of the Cobra tanks. Those two tanks had retreated as soon as they saw the helicopter coming in. When the remaining Cobra soldiers retreat to join up with their tanks, the Joes jump on their new vehicle, the Polar Battle Bear, and they commandeer one of the Hiss tanks that had been left on the battlefield, and they give chase. On the way, Snowjob mentions something to rock and roll about Gung Ho's sister being a fashion model, and Doc tries to check under Snake Eyes' mask for frostbite, but he gets a gun in his face. Back at Cobra headquarters in Springfield, Cobra Commander has hired a specialist to deal with this situation. We don't get to see the specialist's face, but we all know who it is. The Baroness mentions that she has met this specialist before, so this is the first hint that there is a connection between Destro and the Baroness. The Joes catch up with the Cobra tanks at a pumping station along the pipeline, and they see Cobra soldiers removing some canisters from the tanks. They don't know exactly what they are, but they look important. Rock and Roll suggests that the team split up so some of them can go after the tank and the infantry. Gung Ho does not think this is a very good idea, and Hawk agrees with Gung Ho. So this is another point where Gung Ho kind of gets on Rock and Roll's bad side. The Joes burst into the pumping station and take out all of the Cobra soldiers, except for one who informs them that their gunfire has broken the canisters which contain a plague toxin. The Cobra soldiers had put the plague toxin in the pipeline to contaminate the oil supply. Here, once again, a Cobra soldier soldier informs the Joes of the Cobra's secret plan when Cobra could have succeeded if he had just kept his mouth shut. This is a real plague toxin and if he had just not said anything, the whole G.I. Joe team would have been dead. The Joes are surprised by an explosion. A Cobra RPG team is taking out the two remaining Cobra tanks. The Joes pull the Polar Battle Bear into the pumping station while the RPG team is reloading. At the Joes field headquarters, the wounded are being unloaded from the helicopter and reinforcements are on the way. The plague toxin to which the Joes have been exposed will kill them within six hours, so they figure they had better get down the line and find this specialist before they're all dead. So they decide to wait until the RPG team fires and while they're reloading, they're going to escape on the Polar Battle Bear. As Snowjob, Doc, and Snake Eyes are escaping on the snowmobile, Snake Snake Eyes confiscates the RPG from the Cobra team. Back at the field headquarters, Breaker, who I guess was not injured too badly, is on the radio with General Hawk requesting reinforcements and a quarantine. Uh, General Hawk says yes to the reinforcements, but no on the quarantine because they just don't have the personnel. The Joes on the snowmobile follow the tracks of the Cobra tanks and it leads to a nuclear power plant that is right alongside the oil pipeline. A worker at the plant informs the Joes that Cobra has stolen a bunch of plutonium from the plant. Cobra hang gliders attack the snowmobile from the air, the Joe helicopter releases its own hang glider piloted by Airborne. These hang gliders were meant to represent actual toys. Cobra had a hang glider called the Viper Glider, and G.I. Joe had a hang glider called the Falcon Glider, but the toy Falcon was piloted by Grunt, not Airborne. Airborne lines up the two Cobra gliders and Snake Eyes takes them out with the RPG. Airborne lands the hang glider and joins the other Joes on the Schemobile. He introduces himself and mentions that his real name is Franklin Talltree. Snow Job asks him if Tall Tree is an Indian name, and he says, no, it's Native American. I actually like this. 
this. Calling Native Americans Indians is a misnomer, and it always has been, so I really have no problem with correcting that error in the language. Back at the pumping station, the Joe helicopter is coming in, and Cobra is about to take it out with an anti-aircraft missile, when Gung Ho displays extraordinary bravery by single-handedly taking out the entire Cobra missile squad. A second Joe helicopter flies to pumping station number two, 50 miles away, and Zap and Wild Bill meet up with workers at the pumping station who are going to stop the oil flow to prevent the spread of the plague toxin. Joe reinforcements arrive at pumping station number one and they take the rest of the Cobra soldiers prisoner. Hawk mentions that the reinforcements are wearing CBR gear, that's chemical, biological, and radiological, even though the artwork shows them wearing no such thing. Rock and Roll asks Gung Ho if he can go on a date with Gung Ho's hot sister. Sister, and Gung Ho is pissed off. He informs Rock and Roll that his sister is nine years old. The workers at pumping station number two put a probe in the pipeline that they say is designed to check for leaks, and Wild Bill looks on. Meanwhile, the Joes on the snowmobile arrive at pumping station number two, and they see that the Cobra tracks lead to a building. They figure Cobra has taken over the pumping station, so they radio Zap, who is in the helicopter. Zap rushes in to save Wild Bill. Uh, the Cobra agents, who are disguised as, as the pumping station workers, pull their guns but Wild Bill does his cowboy quick draw and takes them out. The probe that the disguised Cobra soldiers were putting in the pipeline was actually the plutonium that they were transporting to pumping station number three. Here the Joes encounter the Cobra specialist who still remains in shadow. He holds the Joes at gunpoint and he has the plague toxin antidote in his hand. Again, why does he tell the Joes that he has the antidote? If he had just not said anything about it, then Cobra might have succeeded here. The Geneva Convention does not allow Doc to fire a weapon, but he can take other measures so he throws a snowball at Destro's gun, and then he tackles Destro to get the antidote. Doc wrestles Destro in the shadows until Destro throws him free. Once Doc is out of the way, the other Joes open fire. The Cobra his tank in the shed is rigged to blow up with dynamite. Destro escapes on his own snowmobile. He takes out the polar battle bear with one of his wrist rockets. He tries to take out the helicopter as well, but his other wrist rocket is a dud. When Doc was wrestling with Destro, he got beat up pretty badly, but he managed to retrieve the antidote to the plague toxin, so the Joes are all saved. The Joes in the helicopter fly to pumping station number three, where Cobra soldiers are unloading the plutonium that they stole from the nuclear power plant. Uh, Doc makes them a deal. They've all been exposed to the plague toxin, and he will share the antidote with them if they will give up the plutonium, uh, which of course they do. Doc says they may be evil, but they're not stupid. Back at G.I. Joe base camp, Doc gives the antidote to the Joes that have been exposed to the plague toxin, and Rock and Roll is pissed off at Snowjob, who did not tell him that Gung Ho's sister was nine years old. You didn't ask, says Snowjob, and Doc goes on to inform Rock and Roll that Snowjob was going to scam him out of money as well. That's why they call me asshole. Everybody smiles because it's funny for some reason, and that's the end of the issue. Let's evaluate this issue starting with the ending. It's a sitcom ending and I could really do without that. Like the previous issue, this issue throws a lot of information at us in just a few pages. It introduces a whole slew of new characters, and it gives each of those characters enough attention uh, that we can see each one's individual personality. It's also a pretty complex story. I mean, there's a lot going on here. There's plague toxin and plutonium and a pipeline and tanks and uh, pumping station number one and two and three and all this stuff going on. It's a pretty complex story, and uh, Again, maybe Cobra's plan was a little bit too complicated. They might have actually succeeded here uh, if they had maybe made their plan a little bit simpler. This comic also introduces Destro. Even though his name is not mentioned, he's just referred to as a specialist, and we don't get to see his face, we do know that this is Destro. It also gives a hint at a connection between Destro and the Baroness. We see two new G.I. Joe vehicles, the Polar Battle Bear and the Falcon Glider, and we see some new Cobra vehicles. We see the Cobra Hiss tank for the first time, and the Cobra Viper Glider. So it's great that Cobra is now getting some vehicles. Also, this issue is wall-to-wall -wall action. There are some downsides to this issue. Once again, G.I. Joe learned of Cobra's plans from Cobra. Cobra agents provide information to the Joes that they weren't even asked for, and this allows the Joes to have the information they need to defeat Cobra's plan. The resolution comes when Cobra soldiers make a deal and exchange the plutonium for the antidote, and this is a contrast with previous issues 
issues of G.I. Joe when we have seen Cobra soldiers voluntarily accept death rather than defeat. Another downside is the artwork of Mike Vosberg. Most of the time it's okay, but there are some panels that seem a little bit rushed and oversimplified, and some of the drawings just end up looking kind of weird. Really, it's the story and not the artwork that makes this issue a classic. It is really exciting to see new members of the G.I. Joe team. We haven't had any new members since the first issue, and so this is a turning point in the comic book series. I highly recommend that you check this issue out. It was a great issue, and I loved it. That was my review of G.I. Joe number 11. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I've got a lot of great new G.I. Joe comic book and toy reviews coming up, and you do not want to miss them. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.